Well, let me ask you this. What kind of guitars are in the back of your mind right now? Like, I'd really like to get X, Y, and Z. I know you just got that telly, but yeah. I know how it is. Like, you get one, but there's another one lurking behind that periphery. On deck? Yes. The, the only one that I truly miss is I, I had a, a custom shop, uh, like an R4, like with the wraparound, oh, yeah. um, Les Paul, and, and like no, uh, everyone tells me that that's a bad idea. They're like, you want the saddles? It doesn't intonate. I'm like, I don't intonate to life. <laughs> I'm like, I will bend those strings and you know, I'll do what needs you, to be done. I'll do what needs to be done. You squeeze harder. You, you want sharper? Squeeze harder. You want that's less right. sharp? You, you see, less sharp. You don't even call it flat. Like, yeah, just less sharp. Hey, can you play a B less sharp? Yeah, I can play a B less sharp. Perfect. Uh, I think, yeah, I there was a 54 gold top that I had that was just like a, a reissue. But yeah. I, I like, I, you know, I, as people do, I wanted something else, so I let it go. And I, I still, like, go, man, that was a really good one. Like, it was loud when you hit it. I, you shouldn't have sold that one. So, ah, but I it's keep seeing. Them. I know there's a Murphy one of those on on Wildwood right now, but so much, so much dollars. Yeah, they. So many, are, so I mean, that's the thing that's been getting me is like I've got such a hankering for a, a Murphy aged and painted beast, but they are. I mean, you know, granted, are they expensive as the real thing? No, no. But yeah. still, it's you know, it's oh man, that's a lot of that's a lot of scalotti. Yeah. And just wait, Brian, until <laughs> the kids get older. My, my, I got four of them at home. And now, of course, they're all at home again uh, because of the coves. And, oh, um, it's, um, uh, you know, just feeding them is, uh, is great expense. <laughs> oh, they eat so much food and oh don't do God. any work. Uh, it's, it's, <laughs> it's amazing. I, I kind of joke around my, my, uh, my oldest, um, you know, he's, he's my size. He's six, seven. And, um, and we like to eat, you know, you gotta eat, You gotta and, eat. Uh, but it's, he likes to stay up late at night. So we'll, we'll have dinner and we'll maybe have some leftovers and like, well, great. At least we'll have some leftovers for the, you know, the next day. But then I refer to him as the night comer. He'll come yeah. in <laughs> and it'll just be gone, which I used to feed. do myself when I was a young. And so I relate, yeah. but it's, it's, well, you, it's you not. always say feast, right? Exactly. You must feast. feast. <laughs> we take it very seriously. There's nothing wrong with it, but That's great. Uh, when you have uh, large humans feasting all at the same time, it's, uh, yeah. it's the party it's never tough. ends. So I now I've got uh, yeah. I've got a college a college student at home who's taking classes. I've got my high schoolers now taking some summer school classes in this jazz thing. I've got my oldest daughter who's doing her work from home, and then my wife is working from home, and then my son and I do these four live feeds a week, and we've been doing the, I've been doing these interviews and so on. So it's never ending activity. But you know what? It's kind of fun. I'm sure we'll yeah. look back on this and say, "Remember that time when we all had to help?" You know what I mean? Remember when we were inside for a year? <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't yeah. that great? Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> I don't really, really got to know each other. <laughs> but I will say though that I, I read uh I read a lot of people, like a lot of couples were fighting in the beginning. And I, I realized that like I don't know, I said like to like the other day my wife says like she's like, I guess we get along because we haven't really fought. So I was like, that's cool. Yes. Yeah, it's pretty good. That's relieving. It, it is indeed, especially you know, you you figure you're on the road X amount of days a year and yeah. that, and that can be a, a tension diffuser. Yeah. You know because I mean? you're like, away from everybody. So you exactly. don't have to. <laughs> and all of a sudden you're at home and you realize, well, you can't go anywhere, but you know, as you said, it's like, I guess we all get along pretty good. I and mean, there's no yeah. knockout drag outs, you know? No, it was pretty, pretty, uh, pretty good. And I learned how to, I learned how to water a lawn very well. Perfect. Yeah. It's green as can be. So, I got the depth marked down. I got a screwdriver to test the soil. That must be the most awesome lawn in the history of man. I am satisfied, I will say, with my lawn. <laughs> Unlike my guitar collecting, which is never ending. Yes. Well, we just so, had the, uh, we had an Ikea run the other day. I don't know if you've ever done one of those. Oh, I love it. Well, you know what? I, I'm, I'm convinced that there's a level of repression <laughs> with 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 an IKEA visit because you go and you're all, you get excited about going. You're like, let's go to IKEA. We'll shop. We'll, we'll pick out some furniture. It's not going to be that much money. We'll get some meatballs. Maybe some of those cinnamon rolls. 
it'll be great. And then you get there and they're out of that one thing you wanted. So Ooh. then you got to figure out something else. And then you're trying to find, oh, they got the three parts, but not the fourth part. Or where is that? Then you got to ask somebody and they got to go find it someplace. And then you're in this long ass line and then you pack it up in your vehicle and you get home. And as you're putting it together, there's always that one piece that just won't quite fit. And you exhaust the entire repertoire of your filth infused profanity until you're inventing new <laughs> stuff. And then finally, you, you know, you jimmy the thing into position and then it's all done. And then everyone smiles again. Oh, isn't this great? Oh, Ikea is the best. Like, and then you repress it. You repress the right. whole negative aspect. Of yes. It. That just happened. Ah, to me. <laughs> that's a bad, I, I did not forget my Ikea experience. I, so I never, I never kind of like lost it with that. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I must have had an extra bad experience where it was just like really, I, I don't know, furniture shopping for me oh, is a nightmare. Oh. I've done it too much. It's never, never pleasant. Well, what happened was, you know, we had my daughter moved away uh, to Vermont. She was out, she, was doing, she graduated from college and she was doing this AmeriCorps gig out in uh, Brattleboro, Vermont. And then she decided to come back home. But while she was gone, my other daughter, they used to share this room and they had these bunk beds and we disassembled the bunk beds, put them side by side. And then we put the one bunk bed in the garage and we thought we had kept all the screws, right? Well, the screws were gone. We couldn't find them. So then I tried, <laughs> I tried to MacGyver it. I'm no MacGyver. So then one thing led to another and we found ourselves at that damn Ikea. And let me tell you something. They were out of those meatballs. Couldn't even get any meatballs. No meatballs. It was, I'm sorry to go on about Ikea. As you can it's, tell, I'm very deeply It's fine. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. It's totally okay. You got to get a local butcher shop. Maybe not like Ikea oh. for the meatballs. Might be a good move. Well, what was funny was, is that I'll never forget the first time I was in Sweden, I was doing some Fender clinics over there. And there was a guy that was with me that was the artist relations guy from Fender Europe, uh, Jamie Crompton, just a classic English rogue. It was just a fun as hell to be around. And then we were traveling with the, the Fender district sales manager for all of Scandinavia who lived in Sweden. So we're in Sweden and we're going from Jotoboy to uh, 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 Stockholm, someplace in between. And finally I said, hey, are Swedish meatballs a thing? I mean, is that, or is that just like an American thing? Like, oh no, that's a thing. I'm like, well, where I would really like to get the epitome of what Swedish yeah. meatballs are. And so we're driving. He goes, Oh, I know just the place. So we're driving for a few hours. He pulls into an Ikea. <laughs> like, no, he didn't. He did. And then my oh. English friend looked at me, he goes, that tells you everything you need to know about, <laughs> about eating in Sweden. I go, I Oh, that is yes. not accurate. I'm like, that ain't right. So I don't think so. I'm calling. I'm calling somebody at Bender immediately. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. I thought that there was like a thing, though. I thought it was like a. I thought I so know too. Thing, yeah. I'm not Maybe sure. Maybe the guy just didn't want to take the time out. He's like, ah, there's an IKEA. These these guys won't know the difference. Uh, be that as it may. Although, let's be honest, those IKEA meatballs are pretty damn good. It it really? helps you. It helps you. Uh, shall we say, uh, suffer through the rest of the experience of the of the one piece that just won't fit and the other items that are just seemingly nowhere to be found. So. You and you got to save those little wrenches, the Allen wrenches. Oh, exactly. <laughs> because it's not a, it's not a size. It's no, not a size. it's not. It's no. not. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like five sixteenths and a half. <laughs> <laughs> it's not really a size. You can't do it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and nine millimeter is not the same. <laughs> I have I have a, a sort of uh, like I have a lot of tools. <laughs> oh, you're a toolsman? Well, not like big tools, like guitar tools. So tiny uh -huh. tools. I have a lot of tiny tools. Um, but like you know, different measuring things and all sorts of because uh, you know they get weird. Guitars get weird, and you got to fix them. So so you you like to work on your own stuff. You, you yeah okay. Well, I, uh, I went to electronics school uh, for audio electronics. So I, uh, I built amps. So, yeah, I've done, and, and like, don't tell anybody, but any, any reissue hand wire amps, I, I pretty much got the whole thing and then just redo it. No kidding. Well, because, yeah, well, yeah, because like I get picky about it. I have like a couple old ones. Uh, I have one old one, uh, a deluxe reverb that's really old, and I just want everything to sound as close to that as possible. So, right. I sort of, and I have like a, um, I had 
an old AC 30. So then I got like a reissue AC 15 and, and like I safety, right. <laughs> safety protocols right. out the window, 2020. I'm going 1959. Safety right. protocol. Yeah. <laughs> Touch it and die. <laughs> right. Like you have to, you know, cause it sounds different, whatever. There's so, no question. No they, so I, you know, I kind of like change transformers and things and capacitors and compare them. I like to compare. Like say, oh, does this sound better than this? I don't know. Ah, fascinating. Mostly it's just different. Fascinating. See, I've always been a total lame and uh, have never worked on my own stuff. I, I, no. I just, you know what it is? I, I think more than anything else is that, you know, I'm the youngest of seven kids. Yeah. And, and I always was of the mind of, you know, claim ignorance and other people will do it for you. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> Which yes, is totally true. dysfunctional and, and and messed up if we're, if we're yeah. honest. But like if I'm in a pinch, Good I can do a truss rod right. adjustment and I can set up intonation. Yeah. Uh, but most of the time I don't. And, and I never work on my own amps. I wouldn't know uh <laughs> which is which I know I could do it if I would spend time to do it, and maybe I, at some point I will. Uh, but you know, I have my guys that I'll go to. This is another funny thing, which again, this is you know, just kind of a testimony of lameness, but um, I would never do at home recording other than like um, uh, really? I would demo stuff in GarageBand or on my phone, you know, voice memo. Yeah. I, that's how I get my ideas done. And, and then I go into a studio to record. And so now, you know, my son being home, all of a sudden now we've got, <laughs> we've got interfaces, you know, we got stuff on the computer, we're micing everything up, you know, and so it's, it's been kind of a cool thing in that regard. Now we're to the point where, I mean, the drum sounds and stuff we're getting at home is like, we could just record here and it sounds good. So yeah. You know, it's always nice to know there's there, there's life after 50. <laughs> hey, see, I will also say this. I don't know if you're a, a dealer there, but I, the only amp that I ever opened up and looked at and played and said, nah, this doesn't need anything, was uh, a Milkman amp. Oh, you know that's that a good company? amp. That's yeah. a good amp. I bought their uh, their Creamer. And, okay. Uh, I So whenever I get a new amp, I got to open it up and look at it just to see, curiosity. Uh, and then I, I looked in there and I closed it up. I was playing it first and I was like, this doesn't need anything. We're leaving this exactly the way it is. They didn't touch a thing. So that's a good amp. All right. I like yeah. it. So, I like it. I don't know. But yeah, I couldn't, uh, the whole thing came from, I would have loved to have asked somebody else to do all this stuff, except for back to the, you know, like touring question is when we oh, started yeah. out, like there was just no option. There was right. like, if, if my guitar blew up or my amp blew up, I wasn't going to get, I couldn't afford a new one or a backup. So right. there was no, I had, if it blew up at one show, I had to fix it by the next. Right. So that was the deal. And I learned it all by buying a reissue basement, probably yes. used. And I ripped everything out of it and rebuilt it hand wired so that I could fix it. So that's how oh, yeah, that actually you. came. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it came out of necessity. That's how it happened. And Tweed Basin sound magnificent. So sick. Well, the 59 sound is named after the 59 basement that I built. Ah. So I that's see the you. 59 sound. Yeah. See what I did there? I see you. <laughs> A real A to B move. <laughs> but it seems so mystical. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Well, that awesome. Like Brian, thanks so much know. for spending some time with us. This has been a blast. Yeah. Thank you for having me. It was awesome talking to you. I love watching your videos, too. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate that. It's really good. All right, well, thank you. So cool to be able to have. Hopefully, one of these days, we'll meet in person after this uh, this COVID situation has disappeared. Yeah. The pest, after the pestilence has passed, as I like the to say. The pestilence and the land rested from war. <laughs> That's what they say. Isn't that what happened after the, the plagues of Egypt or something? I believe so. That? Exactly. Yeah, somewhere. It's a Old Testament stuff. <laughs> All right, my oh. friend. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for Absolutely. joining us on the uh, Wildwood at Home slash Chewing the Gristle segment. And uh, you take care of yourself and uh, be safe. And we'll hopefully see you soon. You as well. Thank you for having me. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you.